contrary to popular belief, when a helicopter engine fails, this is not what happens. All helicopters have a hidden parachute that could help them safely land if the engines failed. Oh no, not that parachute. I'm talking about auto rotation, which uses nothing but the powerless rotor blades like a parachute, similar to how an airplane can glide down when it loses all engines. Or like this guy in his gyro boat, who's flying while getting pulled by a tow line. But why the operator of this flying boat was afraid to let go of the tow line? What allows gyroplanes to fly even though the rotors are not powered by any engines? How some helicopters can eject their pilots during emergency without turning them into ground meat? And finally, the real reason why helicopters crash more often than airplanes is not what you think. In 2015, the famous American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted about how an airplane with failed engines turns into a glider, but a helicopter with failed engines turns into a brick. Come on, Neil, where are you tweeting from Uranus? First of all, what actually falls like a brick is the F4 Phantom. Just Google F4 Phantom glide ratio and this is what you get. Secondly, a helicopter only turns into a brick if its rotor blades were not turning, which could be manufactured. And that's how a lot of the helicopter crash tests are conducted, without the use of a rotating rotor. But in practice, a helicopter with failed engines turns into a maple seed. But first, English is not my first language. I only started learning it in high school, and have since been dabbling in French and Russian as well. Devaite Paslushayam Nashava Sponsara means a word from our sponsor Babbel, which can help you learn a language just like it's been helping me. My favorite thing about Babbel is that they use real pronunciations, as opposed to the AI voice on many other apps that I've tried before. And learning the actual pronunciation by a native speaker is huge when it comes to learning a new language. Each lesson takes only 5 to 10 minutes, and you can practice on your phone, desktop, or tablet. Babbel teaches you conversations that you can use when traveling to another country or practice with your friends who speak that language. You can use the flashcards that are provided within the app to review your learnings. But Babbel also offers live classes, and you can get two free classes with your subscription, which by the way, has a 20-day money-back guarantee. Qu'est-ce que tu attends? So what are you waiting for? Get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription when you sign up using the link in the description. As a maple seed is pulled down by gravity toward the ground, its flat and asymmetric wing starts to generate turbulence in the air. These are known as leading edge vortices. This experiment clearly shows the vortices that were generated behind the edge of the rotating blade, which in turn generate lift to negate some of the gravitational force as the maple seed falls. In addition to that, as the maple seed moves through the air, air resistance slows down the fall just like a parachute. This explains why maple seeds don't fall down like a rock. They auto-rotate, the exact same phenomenon that allows a helicopter with failed engines to safely land. What's cool is that besides emergency landing for helicopters, it's actually possible to use auto-rotation to fly for an extended period of time, just like this guy. We'll come back to him in a minute, but how does a helicopter exactly perform auto-rotation? During a normal helicopter flight, the rotor blades powered by the engine draw air from above and then exhaust it downward to generate lift. But when the engine loses power, the airflow reverses. As gravity pulls the helicopter down, air is forced into the rotor system from below turning the rotor blades, just like how moving a pinwheel through air will make it rotate. A helicopter needs to be a minimum of 5 to 700 feet above the ground to ensure the rotor blades have enough time to pick up some RPM until they reach a constant rotation speed. The faster the blades turn, the slower and safer the helicopter descends. To demonstrate this, you can clip a little piece of tinfoil to different parts of a maple seed, which will change its RPM as it falls. As you can see, the fast rotating seed hits the ground much later and with less impact. This is the collective lever, 
one of the main controls on a helicopter. Pulling up the collective increases the pitch on the blades, and lowering the collective makes the blades more flat. When the rotor is powered by the engine, increasing the pitch will generate more airflow and lift, but it also increases drag. To auto-rotate, the pilot must immediately lower the collective all the way down, because a flat blade produces less drag as it rotates in the air. This means the blades can turn faster as the helicopter is pulled down by gravity, which results in a slower descent. Auto-rotation is quite effective, because the rotor has nearly the drag coefficient of a parachute, even though it consists of blades. NASA even investigated the use of auto-rotating blades to land the space capsule during re-entry, but they ended up using parachutes at the end. Unlike pilots of military airplanes, most helicopter pilots don't have the luxury of using an ejection seat in an emergency. But some manufacturers have figured out how to eject helicopter pilots without shooting them through blades rotating at 4 to 500 RPM. The world's first helicopter fitted with an ejection seat was the Russian Ka-50. The problem of turning pilots into ground meat was finally solved, but not by ejecting the pilots downward. Before the ejection seat rocket is deployed, the rotor blades are blown away using explosive charges in the rotor disc. The canopy is then jettisoned, allowing for safe ejection. We should note that sometimes a pilot is forced to enter auto-rotation even when the engine is working fine. And that happens when there is an issue with the tail rotor. One of the functions of the tail rotor is counteracting the torque of the main rotor. If there was no tail rotor, the torque generated by the main rotor would rotate the helicopter out of control. So in case of tail rotor failure, the pilot can disengage the power from the main rotors to initiate auto-rotation. This will stop the helicopter from rotating uncontrollably around itself, because even though the main rotor blades continue to turn during auto-rotation, since the power is not generated by the engine, there is virtually no torque. Back to this guy flying his rotorcraft. This is called an autogyro gyrocopter or gyroplane. It kind of looks like a helicopter, except it flies using auto-rotation. There's a propeller on the back, which is powered by an engine, but that only provides forward movement, not lift. As the vehicle speeds up on the ground, air flows through its free-spinning rotor, which generates enough lift to fly up and stay in the air. Just like a helicopter in auto-rotation, the rotor of an autogyro doesn't produce torque, so no tail rotor is required, but there is a rudder on the tail to provide yaw control. During World War II, Germans would deploy rotor kites behind their U-boats. They were called Fock Achilles FA-330. This was essentially an autogyro, but with no engine at all. Towing the kite behind the U-boat is what created the forward momentum and in turn the auto-rotation. The rotor kites were used as a lookout to see further away. The 400-foot tether would allow the pilot to observe as far as 25 nautical miles away as opposed to only 5 nautical miles visible from the conning tower of the U-boat, giving them a massive advantage. But rotor kites were not only used for reconnaissance in the military but also for fun. In about five minutes, the gyro boat was ready to go, which just like the previous autogyro, flew with the help of auto-rotation. The only difference was that there was no engine on board. The forward momentum was generated by the towing boat in the front. For the gyro boat to actually lift off the water and stay airborne, it had to be pulled by a boat at a minimum speed of 20 miles per hour. Within a short hour, the operator would get a hang of flying the gyro boat to actually have some fun. That said, the operator was not allowed to let go of the rope. As you know by now, if the rope was disconnected, 
the gyro boat would have simply auto-rotated and slowly landed on water. So why was the operator not allowed to drop the rope? Well, because it would have been illegal. The moment the operator let go of the tow line, the gyro boat would have been considered an aircraft and operating an aircraft would have needed a pilot's license, which he didn't have. The emergence of helicopters may have made autogyros obsolete for many military applications. Helicopters are just much more powerful and can carry much bigger loads. But they're not without risks, even on the ground. A helicopter can self-destruct while simply sitting on the ground. And that typically can happen when the rotor has more than two blades. You may have noticed what happens when the clothes inside a washing machine gets clumped up on one side as the drum spins. In an extreme case, the washing machine can fall apart. A similar thing can happen with helicopters that have three or more blades. That's because the blades can advance or lag in their rotation and that can shift the center of gravity of the helicopter. Now, while in the air, that's not a big deal. But once the helicopter touches the ground, a resonance can form in the airframe, and if not dealt with, it can very quickly get out of control. But there is a solution. The pilot must quickly hover as soon as ground resonance begins, and the shaking would immediately stop. This phenomenon has even been observed during filming of TV shows. Two-bladed helicopters are pretty safe from ground resonance, since the blades are one rigid structure and cannot impact the helicopter's center of gravity. But all this said, which do you think is more dangerous to fly? Helicopters or airplanes? According to the data collected by the National Transportation Safety Board, General aircraft, which includes airplanes, helicopters, balloons, and everything else, have an average crash rate of 7.28 for every 100,000 hours of flight time. The crash rate for helicopters alone is 9.84 per 100,000 hours. But before calling helicopters less safe than airplanes, you may want to consider the unique flight characteristics of helicopters. They usually fly at lower altitudes and more complex terrain, like mountains and other hard-to-reach environments. This certainly contributes to more accidents, and by far the biggest reason for helicopter crashes is human error, not mechanical problems. But even with the higher crash rate, the fatality rate in helicopter crashes is lower, with 1.3 deaths per 100,000 flight hours, compared to 1.4 death for aircraft in general. If you learned something new, hit the like button so it reaches more people. And if this video was not what you thought, consider subscribing.